Welcome once again to another session of canning technology and value addition of seafoods. So we were discussing about canning procedures for various seafood products and under this we had discussed about step by step process variations in item wise seafood canning. So we have seen what are the different types of seafoods that can be canned and what are the protocols that need to be adopted for canning and step by step we have seen certain steps they are unique and they can be adopted only for the particular item but in general the steps are same for all the seafoods and uh, uh, we have also seen pre-processing steps and in that we have seen uh, what is a grader what are the different types of grader how it can be done manually and uh, what are the different mechanized uh, types of graders and we had also seen about the sorters and a washer so we stopped with washer in the last class and washer is mainly used for removing the blood stains and the adhering materials that are on the surface of the meat or on the surface of the skin that will give a bad appearance or it will interfere with the appearance of the tissue so those things and even the slime is also washed out and for that we use washers efficiency of washer depends upon the kinetic energy of the water or the speed with which or the force with which the water is pumped into the machine. In this section again we have to discuss about other uh, preprocessing techniques and we are also discussing about additives in the coming sessions. So now let's start with the deheading. So immediately after washing the fish is uh, deheaded. Deheading means removing the head and the deheading it can be done in different ways. And when we do deheading, we concentrate on the efficiency that is there should not be any loss in the tissue or muscle should not or meat should not be lost. We can cut a round cut. These are the different cuts seen over here. So we can have round cut and then contoured cut, straight cut and we can also have slant cut. In the round cut, the cut is made just behind the operculum. In this cut, the loss of meat is minimum. And in case of contour cut, first the cut is made perpendicular to the backbone and then it is made at an angle of 45 degree. So it is a slanting angle and the, even there is a slight loss but it is comparatively it is less. And in the slant cut, the cut is in the slanting angle and here around 4 to 5 percent of tissues are lost so meat is lost in this type of cuts. After cutting the meat need to be washed because uh, when deheading is done the blood will ooze out and other tissues will be damaged so it need to be cleaned thoroughly and washed properly and generally head contributes to around 10 to 20 percent of the total body weight so when we are removing the head portion this much part will be lost and this head it can be used for other purposes it can be converted to other byproducts uh, we can also use it as an animal feed the contour cut technique is also used when filleting is done and it is contour cut it is used when fillets with boneless or the skin is removed in such kind of fillets which has a very high economic value and which uh, fetches a lot of money or the, which has a very high fare in the market. For such cuts we go for contour cut. In this the pectoral bones and fins are removed along with the head. Now in small fishes the heading, beheading can be done manually but in case of large fish uh, we cannot go for a manual beheading because it is uh, laborious and it is not easy to cut so we generally go for mechanized or automated systems and uh, there is no single system where uh, we can have all type of cuts so uh, different machineries are required for different types of cuts we cannot find all these things in one single machine. And cutting can also be done using uh, different types of knives. We have disc knife, contoured knife, then cylindrical knives. We have band saws and guillotine cutters. So these are different types of cutters that are used uh, for cutting. And usually the band saws and guillotine cutters, they are used for large sized fish. And uh, deheading can be adjusted in the mechanized system. So depending upon the size of the fish and the shape of the fish, deheading can be adjusted. So knife, the knife position can be changed accordingly. 
and usually in the mechanized machine we can do cutting deheading can be done like 20 to 40 fish can be done in a minute so that shows the speed or the, or the how fast deheading can be done in an automated system when it is done manually at a slow pace we don't get this kind of efficiency in manual cutting but then it is uh, the cutting will be efficient because meat will not be lost that much also when we do the automated system uh, experience is required the skilled person they need to be highly experienced and uh, that can be attained by regular practice in guillotine cutters it is uh, more like we are just placing the fish on the platform and cutting it directly on the head the knife falls perpendicularly on the uh, fish and uh, these cutters we can change depending upon the species and the size and usually guillotine cutters they are used for freshwater fish and uh, we can also the contoured cuts and the round cut which we had seen earlier these are also called economical cuts because these are economical in the sense that meat lost is minimal compared to the other cuts and a cylindrical rotational saw it is used for round cut and the sizes can differ from 12 to 18 centimeters in diameter again this size can be changed or it can be modified according to the type of fish we are using so depending upon the species and the size of the material the knives need to be changed so ultimately we can understand that uh, we can use different types of knives for cutting the fish and depending upon the type of fish whether it is a marine fish or the freshwater fish and the size and the shape of the fish the knife can be used accordingly and basically the manual cutting is more convenient and more economical since uh, the tissue lost is minimum but uh, in some cases we cannot go for manual cutting in such cases we have to definitely adopt the mechanized or automated system so these are some other types of uh, deheading machine this is a guillotine cutter and this is uh, suitable for large fishes so if you can see the platform over here and uh, over the fish is placed and this is a glitten knife which falls on the fish. So it is perpendicular to the fish. It just cuts the head from the uh, fish body. In the guillotine cutter, we cannot control the loss of tissue. So here, uh, when we use the guillotine cutter, the loss of tissue will be much higher than the other types of cutters. So these are another other types of cutters. And here we can see the cylindrical rotational saw it is used for round cut. Just behind the operculum, uh, the heading is done. And this is a circular saw. And this one is manual operated with the help of liver it is a straight cut the fish is placed over the cutter and it will cut the head and in the next figure the last figure it is a combination of disc saw and a guillotine cutter so you you have both the actions here and this is a platform over which the fish is placed and uh, the disc saw as well as guillotine action can be used for cutting the heads these are other things that we can see in a pre-processing center or pre-processing company. So this is a platform where the cutters are done or deheading and uh, degutting is done and uh, the waste materials they will be absorbed into the uh, vacuum uh, it will be vacuum sucked and collected in the bins so the platforms can be clean and it can be used continuously and uh, this is a deheading and gutting machine so here uh, simultaneously on the platform deheading is done and along with the deheading the gutting is also done so this can be a knobbing section also because knobbing means we, uh, removing the head and the gut region so this can be equated to the gutting knobbing section and this are the different types of brushes that are used for cleaning the body and after deheading and removing the gut the contents may uh, ooze out or it may come out from the gut it may stick to the surface of the body so body surface need to be clean and also the body cavity may also contain some unwanted tissues so these also need to be cleaned thoroughly and for these reason we use the brushes and we have rotating brush uh, also uh, we have the vacuum suction brush here so using the vacuum it sucks out the contents inside the uh, cavity so again it is used for cleaning so these are different types of brushes that are used for cleaning the body and it also removes the kidney and other small organs which are not required for other processing steps so we can also go for these three kinds of cleaning techniques now coming to the cutting after the head is removed and cleaning has been done fins need to be removed and in a body of fish we have uh, different types of fins we have dorsal fin on the upper side 
and we also have caudal fin it is the tail portion and in the anal portion we have anal fin and on either sides we have pectoral fins so these fins are not retained in the processed products so these need to be removed during the pre-processing steps so in cutting of fins generally it is done by manual cutting so we use a knife to cut the uh, fins but if the size of the fish is larger and if it is difficult to cut the fins using a knife then we go for mechanized scissors or rotating disc knives this is because the manual cutting is laborious it is labor intensive and it sometimes it is very tiring so it is not an easy process so that's why we go for a uh, mechanized type or automated system for cutting the fins an automated device it has a, a rotating knife uh, so usually it is a disc knife and uh, it will be powered by electric motor since it is motorized at the speed of the fin cutting uh, removing the fin will be much faster and so it's a quick process and uh, the knife slot has a horizontal opening through which the dorsal and ventral fins are placed manually and cut off so this is how the fins are removed from the body of the fish this step is adopted only after the deheading step after deheading and removing the fins the fish is cut into two slices the tissues on the sides of the backbone or on either side of the backbone it need to be cut and it is generally called a slicing or sticking and uh, this can be used as such for different products or we can convert it into plaques or other value added product we can uh, modify it also and we can use these sticks can be used as such for developing the products or it can be converted to other products like burgers or fish cutlets and other things and uh, in the slicing process cut is made perpendicular to the backbone and that is the first cut then it is tilted at an angle of 45 degree and it is cut along the backbone axis and the slice is removed uh, usually the slice or thickness of the stick will be ranging between 2.5 to 4.5 centimeter and in the retail market it fetches a higher amount uh, and even in the canning market uh, we go for steaks and slices because uh, that is much easier and only for the smaller fish it is used in pieces but in case of larger fishes we go for sliced or steaks when we do the canning so for smaller fishes the slicing can be done manually but in the case of larger fishes we need to adopt the a mechanized or automated system for slicing of meat in small fishes or medium sized fish they are first put in a concave basin there are spaces or slots where the fish can be placed and the slicing can be done these slots are provided in the basins to have a, a uniform a thickness for the fish because if we are doing it uh, abruptly we don't have proper space then the thickness of the product will differ and it will also interfere with the economic value of the product and also we need to use a knife a fish uh, slicing knife or we can go for a band saw and large fish they are cut using mechanical uh, slicer this is done with the help of multiple rotating circular saws so uh, there is not one single saw it is a multiple rotating circular saw so there are too many so more than one saws and they are rotating and they are placed at equal distances and through the saws the fish is passing and the line is adjusted in such a way that slicing can be done economically and the automated system it is more efficient than manual uh, slicing and it can slice uh, around 20 to 40 fish in a minute again how the fish moves towards the saw it depends upon the or how it is sliced it depends upon the fish size and the shape and usually the conveyor belt is more efficient because it will continuously carry the fish towards the saw so you can see here different types of cutters and here we have the first cutter here the fish is passed through this opening and the, it will come out through this and it will be sliced this is the second one uh, the drum type uh, loading machine or uh, where the cutting is done inside the drum and this is a conveyor belt which carries the fish towards the cutter so these are different types of cutter that are used uh, for slicing and sticking and we can also go for filleting so usually uh, in the fillet uh, the abdominal and the dorsal muscles they are separated filleting again it can be done manually or automatic using a machine system and usually manual cutting though it is efficient we need uh, skilled laborers for this the laborers can develop skill by doing it repetitively or they do it uh, continuously they can adopt the skills 
but it is a very laborious labor intensive process and filleting needs very uh, high skills because there should not be any loss of tissue at this stage in general uh, filleting machines are very expensive and uh, it is not adopted for fresh water it is generally it is uh, used for the marine fishes and uh, where the economical value of fish is very high in such cases we go for uh, mechanized or automated systems or generally otherwise we go for the manual system in the filleting device it contains a single rotating disc and two conveyor belts so this is a manual cutting machine which is used to cut the uh, fish into two parts uh, in this filleting machine when we do the manual cutting the backbone is retained on one side of the body so one fillet will contain the or one half will contain the backbone and in the freshwater processing the machines which separate the fillets and bones are used and we have these two types of filleting machine it has conveyor belt as well as uh, the knife is there so it again cuts the fish into two equal halves and uh, here we have uh, a conveyor in this filleting machine previous two cases the backbone is retained on the one side of the body but in this kind of filleting machine the, we can also remove the backbone and uh, usually the backbone uh, though it is removed it may retain some of the tissues which generally it goes into the feed industry it is given as a feed and in the fresh water uh, fish when the filleting is done we also retain some part of the backbone it is behind the head region some part of the backbone is also retained and it is very important actually for that we use uh, this kind of machines and this is another machine which helps in cutting the ribs so once the filleting has been done and the backbone has been removed the backbone if it is a smaller backbone then it can be fried or it can be cooked and it will not have any effect on the consumer but uh, the large bones they need to be cleaned and they need to be cut into small pieces and so this machine it is used to cut the ribs and make it into smaller pieces and uh, the fillets uh, which are obtained from the previous method some of the fillets they may contain the backbone they may also contain pin bones pin bones are small bones which are extended into the muscle so these bones uh, they may be retained so fillets they go for canning like i said in the beginning they are used mainly for canning and uh, canned foods they are meant for specifically maybe for the people who are not eating uh, or they don't want uh, bones in their food so maybe infants or babies or um, other uh, group of population where the bones are not uh, needed in their food so we need to be very careful in canning and in processing such kind of foods so pin bones also need to be removed when we process this kind of products so in the simplest filleting machine the gutted and beheaded fish if you see at the figure over here this is a gutted fish the content has been removed and the head is also removed the fish it is placed in the filleting machine and it is placed at an equal distance so that the, there are two knives two disc knives placed over here and it separates the two fillets into equal halves so one part will retain the backbone and other part will not have so it will be a direct cut from the middle it will be cut parallelly along the backbone and it will be cut into two equal halves the efficiency of the or the speed of the machine is like can process 30 to 40 fish in a minute the size can range from 20 to 45 centimeters so 20 centimeter fish can also be cut into two equal halves and even the 45 centimeters so we can go for uh, larger fishes also in this machine and it is highly efficient and quality of the product is also good however when we compare it with the manual filleting manual filleting is more uh, preferred one because the yield is much better in the manual filleting and uh, again uh, the machines designs can change according to the need of the hour so if it is a large fish we can design and modify the machines accordingly and use bigger knives so after the filleting has been done the bones need to be separated and uh, meat bone separators are there it is used to separate the meat from the bones and the skin and meat which is left with the backbone it is recovered on the meat bone separator up to 50 percent of the total mass of the processed backbone can be recovered as meat so in this machine we place the fish uh, with the skin uh, facing towards the bottom and a pressure is applied there's a circular rotating conveyor belt as well as a circular disc which is perforated and which applies pressure on the fish so the meat it will pass through the uh, holes and the skin will coming out and it is collected so 
this helps in separating the meat from the skin and the bones and usually uh, when we do the fillet will be lying on skin down the skin will be facing the conveyor belt and the meat part will be facing the drum and uh, minced meat separated from the inedible part in this case and this minced meat it can be used for other products it can be used for developing fish burgers uh, fish sticks canned fish and it can also be used for dumplings these are food which will be eaten without care like by this i mean that they will not contain any spines or any bones consumer they don't have to be very careful actually if any bones or any unedible parts are trapped in this then it becomes an adulterant. So in such products, it is perceived that they do not contain any spines or any bones. So we have to be very careful when we are mincing the product. This minced product, these are meant for some specific uh, value-added products. And uh, during filleting, 30 to 50 percent of the meat which is recovered uh, during the process, uh, usually the mincing is done using or it is adopted for low-value fish because when we go for fishing, the low-value fish or the bike catch it is generally dumped into the sea which may cause pollution again and it cannot be brought to the shore also because uh, it may not fetch any value in the market so for these reasons uh, the fishermen they generally throw it off low value fish they can be used for developing minced meat and this minced meat we can convert it into different even the imitative products can be developed using minced meat and usually the devices that are used to separate uh, the minced meat or the meat from the bone they are called separators so like i said there's a cylinder over here and cylinder has number of pores pore size it ranges between three to uh, seven millimeter and in fresh water the uh, size will be between four to five millimeters so size of the pore which determines the type of uh, or efficiency of the mince or the efficiency of the equipment so uh, minced meat what should be the quality of the mince and what should be the size of the mince uh, product it will depend upon the pore size or the diameter of the pores so smaller the size the more stronger will be the grinding action it is the pressure that applied by the cylinder over the conveyor uh, which helps in mincing the product minced meat which is recovered by this method it can be packed it can be frozen and then packed in cartons and other type of containers and then it can be used for developing value added products and skinning is another process uh, it is removing the skin from the body so we can do it in the previous machine or we can go for manual skinning again it is a labor intensive process and it is very difficult and uh, so uh, usually when we do skinning manually the fillet is placed on the board with skin down the skin is facing toward the board and the meat portion will be face up on the upper side and one edge will be held by the left hand and the knife will be drawn between the skin and the meat and this helps in separating the meat and the skin but this is a very difficult process and the person need to be highly skilled when they do the skinning process because again it there might be a loss of meat when the skinning is not proper meat may adhere to the skin and it may be lost during the process automated type of systems it came into use in 1992 and usually they are attached to the processing table and uh, since it is automated it contains an electric motor so which speeds up the process of skinning and again they have an oscillating knife the system also contains a compression spring which is operated by a foot pedal so these are different parts of the skinning machine one end of the fillet is placed in the slit between the knife and the compression element and the tip is grasped manually in a wrench which allows the skin to be pulled over the meat under the oscillating knife in the automated system uh, skin is removed with the help of oscillating knife in case of automated system it is much faster and the requirement of water is also much lesser and it can do 20 to 40 filleting in a minute in a minute we can de skin around 20 to 40 fillets and uh, with this we have come to the end of pre-processing so we had seen different uh, steps in pre-processing like grading then washing then we had also seen uh, different types of filleting, steaking uh, or slicing, then degutting, removing of skin. So once these steps have been done uh, efficiently or has been done properly, the product can enter into the next session that is the processing section. And processing again, it is of different types. It can be conventional methods or the non-conventional methods. So we had seen canning already 
and this products they can again be frozen they can be packed and stored and they can also go into drying or smoking so it depends upon the kind of product the consumer needs the processing methods can be adopted accordingly so with this we let's end the session for today thank you